because the first half of this is pretty much just role play. Okay, uh, well, we are on session two of Waterdeep, and um, <clears throat> last time you all had met up at the uh, Yawning Portal, where uh, you saved a uh, lady from a uh, bar fight, actually a half-orc female named Yarga. And right after that battle, a troll with three Sturges come up out of <laughs> come up out of the um, the hole there in the well in the middle of the uh, tavern, and you fought them off and uh, earned the respect of uh, both Doran and um, the bar patrons. And then you got to meet Volo, and Volo had a mission for you to uh, find his missing friend Floon. And he was concerned that Floon uh, took a way, wrong way home and may have fallen victim to uh, foul prey and may have even been kidnapped. And as a reward, um, he gave you all initially each 10 gold pieces, and he promised you uh, if you uh, return Floon to him alive, he would give you a, a 100 gold pieces per character. And someone had done an insight check and realized that, you know, Volo was being honest, but you're a little concerned that he has the ability to pay the uh, promised amount. Yeah, it was from the last scene at the Skeered Dragon. Uh, yes, uh, Volo had met Flume there for drinks uh, two nights ago. You know, they drank for a few hours, and then Volo left, and that's the last that he saw of Flume. I think we had decided to uh, spend the night and head out to check out the Skier Dragon, see if we can get in. Yeah, because we didn't want to go much farther than that, so we didn't get too ahead. So, nah. Wow, why did I forget? Bray Cask? Or wouldn't get too far. Rob would be here for it, wasn't he? Now, Sean's not here. <laughs> Uh, so let me find my city map. He drank too much. He's unconscious under the table. <laughs> and he was drinking every time he went across the table and during. the actual map of uh, Waterdeep. I'll throw a couple of tokens on there. So you can have a layout of the city. And the Yawning Portal is right there at the uh, it's in the uh, trade trades ward section of the town. 
the skewer dragon is uh, south of you. And I'll put that on the map. And if memory serves, I believe uh, Doran had gave you lodging there at the portal. Yeah, I think he said he was going to cover the cost of helping out or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, and he had given um, Bry a uh, free healing potion. <laughs> Score one for the cheap halfling. He should have. It was only half the size of Ocean. You don't need as much to heal when you're smaller. Okay, um... You are in the trade board, um... I know you all only have like 10, 15 gold pieces a piece. Uh, does anyone want to go shopping? Um, nothing that I really want. Or maybe I'll buy a 10 foot pole. That's. <laughs> and, uh,. It, it's morning time, and you're headed to a bar, which probably will not be that busy at 8 in the morning, so you want to have breakfast at the Yawning Portal and kill some time and show up around 11, 12? Sounds like a plan to me. That works. Okay. Uh, Doran uh, provides you a... Uh, very nice breakfast. And you kill some time. And, you know, you're starting to make your way down to uh, the dock ward and find the skewered dragon. And you're walking down the street and you turn a corner and you find yourself on a street that has been cordoned off by the city watch and you can see lying on the cobblestone are a half dozen corpses uh, seemingly the victim of some terrible skirmish and watch officers have disarmed and arrested three blood drenched humans and are in the midst of questioning witnesses and, you know, one of the officers uh, sees you uh, gawking and, you know, she says, uh, get on, you know, there's nothing to see here. Oh, uh, I'll just be uh, nice and kind and you know, more persuasive. What happened here? What's going on? Uh, you know, uh, just uh, real quickly, um, she tells you, you know, that it was another skirmish between the Zentarum and the Xanathar Guild. Huh. And, you know, she's going to uh, take them back to... Uh, the office of the city watch and you know they've you can see that there are three bandits that have been arrested and you know they're sitting on the sidewalk waiting away waiting for the wagons to come and take take them away along with the corpses hmm. and the City Watch tells you, now go mind your own business and get out of here. Okay. Hey, refresh my memory. Who were the Zentarum? Uh, the Zentarum is a mercenary guild based here in Waterdeep. Okay, thanks. 
Uh, they're one of uh, many different guilds. Uh, pretty much everyone's got a guild in Waterdeep. You got a baker's guild, you know, a shipbuilder's guild, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> but right, okay. Uh, the Zentarum are mercenaries for hire. And the Xanathar guild... Um, being in Waterdeep, you would know about Xanathar. Kind of like the mom, but public. Kind of a public face, aren't they? Uh, yes. Um, truly, they are not an actual guild as such, but the Xanathar does um, act like a guild. And Anna, you probably wouldn't know, but Xanathar is a beholder. Okay. Especially attached to his goldfish. That's out of character. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, very attached to his... Uh, Goldfish, and I'm going to post a link in Discord so you can see, see. The current 5e implementation of a Beholder. <laughs> so the Zentarum and the Xanathar Guild are all mercenaries? They're different? Uh, the Zentarum are mercenaries. Uh, Xanathar is uh, a criminal guild. Oh, okay. So they're like the Thieves Guild. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay. Thieves Guild. Got it. Yeah, before we walk around the scene, I'm just going to take a moment to see if I can see anything odd with the bodies or anything weird or anyone paying too close attention to what's going on us or what was going on there. Um. And, you know, you you can see the prisoners, and you know they they're looking at you, looking at them. But you know the city watch is not going to allow you to get close to them. I was just going to go from a distance and observe. But you know you can see that they've been stripped of their weapons, and they've been forced to kneel with their hands on top of their heads. Right. Yeah. and a lot of commotion and you know you can hear um, people talking on the side that you know this war between the two is just really getting out of hand yeah. yes it is and before I leave I'll just ask the, the, the guard is just do you have any idea what caused this war between the two of them, or are they just being douche? Uh, it's mainly, uh, what caused the war? That's if the guard would even know. Uh, yeah, the, um... You know, he, he looks at you and says, you know, it's not really uh, any of my business of what started the war. That's below my pay grade, but you know, it. from time to time, the guilds do fight one another. Okay. And that lately, um, Um, lately it's gotten worse um, apparently there was <clears throat> scuttlebutt has it that you know um, the Centaurum were trying to uh, join and or merge with the Xanathar guild and something went bad 
and as a result all this violence has you know it's just gotten worse thank her give her a little tip of the head and, uh, well, I guess we must have been our way my friend As I realize some people may look at me out with pure white eyes and hard and hardly ever blinking but I'm very charismatic uh, it's well, probably so, the blood that accumulates around your eyes because they dry out that really disturbs <laughs> <laughs> okay um, you continue uh, working your way down past the dock ward uh, headed toward the lower portion of the southern ward and eventually you you find the skewered dragon and uh, your initial thought is is this the right place because it looks like a ruin uh, both of its front facing windows are smashed and you can see a ship's anchor lodged in the roof <laughs> <laughs> and through the uh, through the missing windows you can see there's a group of haggard patrons uh, drinking these huge tankards of ale. Mm -hmm. well, I'm here to find someone. Might as well go head on in with everyone. Okay. Uh, as you walk in, you know, uh, naturally people look up to see who's walking in, but other than that, they really don't pay you any mind and you know the barkeep yells out his welcome and can I get you all a drink I point to the big one I'll have one of those and he's <laughs> like oh definitely and you know he grabs a flagon from behind the bar and fills it up and slaps it down in front of you, Bri. I'll just take a, a glass of your, your non-alcoholic drink. One of your non-alcoholic If there is any. Oh, I love these non-alcoholic people. I make very little money off of water. <laughs> <laughs> you should throw a bucket at him. <laughs> Go get and, your own from the horse trough. Uh, you know, he sets his flagon of water in front of you, and you notice that the glass and the water are not very clean. Well, there goes his tip. <laughs> but looking around, you know, you can see. Uh, there's several people in the bar, and they're chatting or playing cards and whatnot. I'll just uh, take a moment to listen and see if I can hear any. If we hear any gossip or conversations, maybe something that might be of interest to what we're what we're looking for. Maybe people going missing recently in the area region. Uh, there's some talk. <laughs> So, yeah, um, Damon had just asked, said he was going to listen, and your mic cut out like two seconds into your... <laughs> uh, yes, uh, you hear him talk, uh, you know, they're gossiping about the, uh, the skirmish that you all saw, you know, a few blocks away, but no one really knows any details about it, and... You know, they're just still talking about this war between the Zentarum and Xanathar, and it's just gotten out of control. Someone needs to do something about it. All right, so Bri is going to, after, you know, draining half his flagon, is going to hop up on the table and sort of call out, Hey, 
Does anyone know anything about some guy named Flynn? And everybody in the bar looks at the, uh, what are you, a halfling? Yep. Looks at the uh, halfling standing on top of the bar. <laughs> and I look sideways at him and facepalm myself. <laughs> Nothing like getting right to it. And then I'll just watch the room, see any slight reactions or someone leaving too quickly. I'll smile brightly at Demon. And, uh, uh, one of the, one of the guys out in the crowd goes, uh, what do you want to know about Floon for? We heard he hasn't been seen for a few days. We're just curious about where he might be. Anyone know him well? Uh... Yeah, I know him, but, you know, it's not surprising for him to disappear for a few days when he gets drunk. Ah, one of his other friends seemed to think it was quite unusual for him to disappear like Well, you, don't... you know, it's, it's hard to say what he's up to today, you know. He probably got drunk and just went home. Do you happen to know where his home is? Uh, you know, I, I've got this condition where um, I have a hard time remembering things unless I have a gold piece in my hand. I think I've heard of that condition. Uh, which, by the way, in Sirenscape, that's one of the, uh, I think it's under the tavern setting, that's uh, one of the uh, bar bartender's uh, lines. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, he's, um, uh, that's about all he's willing to say on the matter. Unless y'all would like to uh, cop up some gold or be very intimidating or persuasive. I'll give him a gold piece. Could you repeat that? You repeat that I, I said, I'll give him a gold piece. I'll uh, slip it into his hand and say, you know, I think uh, I think this should cure your condition for now. Oh, yes, 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 I, I remember. No, I don't know where Floon lives, but, you know, a couple of nights ago, uh, I remember seeing him and uh, that Volo character drinking together. And, oh. uh, you know, they, they had a few drinks, and after a while, uh, Volo left. And... Uh, I can remember Floon stuck around and he he met up with um, another one I guess it was a friend of his but uh, he met up with uh, Renar never remember however in the hell are you gonna say that <laughs> okay um, and the name does ring a bell with you. Uh, you know that Rainier was the son of, or is the son of Waterdeep's previous open lord. He rules. Never winter now. Right? Open lord? Is that a specific type? Uh, yes. Uh, in Waterdeep, you have open lords who um, they are part of the political party, and, and everyone knows who they are. Then you okay. have, then you're... like, uh, let's say he's like the president, and then you have <laughs> Congress, which consists of all these masked lords. And, and 
no one knows who they are because, you know, they're always dressed in black and have masks over their face. Okay. And you know, <laughs> the guy says, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a chip off the, the old block uh, at Rainier and another one you know, he just sneers and says, yeah, he's another spoiled rich noble who likes to rub our noses in it. Was everything, any word of that he said true, or did he just bullshit us? That would be insight. Absolutely. Here comes a one. <laughs> well, you wasted your crit for the night, Damon. <laughs> Bry, on the other hand, got the fumble. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, both of you all are um, fairly confident that they are telling the truth. And the one guy that... Uh, Ananuska gave the gold piece to. He goes on and, you know, he talks about the, the two of them drank and they played a few rounds of uh, Three Dragon Ante before they left the bar around midnight. And he can remember that when they left, uh, five men who were in the tavern followed followed them out whether you know it was just coincidental that they were leaving at the same time or if they were waiting on Floon and Rainier to leave they don't know but you know um, they did leave uh, shortly after Floon and none of them uh, have been back to the tavern sense. And I'll pipe in there and ask Scott, do you recognize any of those five men? Have you seen them before in the city or come across? Uh, you know, I, I couldn't tell you um, what their names are or anything, but, y you know, uh, this the Scared Dragon's not the only bar that I frequent, and, you know, it kind of elicits a... Uh, growl from the bartender and he's like uh, the other guys I, I know I, I've seen them down uh, at a warehouse on Candle Lane before and one of the other tavern regulars you know um, he shouts yeah just, just look for the snake symbol on the door And you'll know that you have the right warehouse. Candle Lane, snake symbol. Got it. Do any of you happen to know anything else about this Rainier fellow? What he might get up to besides being a rich, spoiled... Ah, that's about all he's good for, is being rich and spoiled. <laughs> and you can tell that, uh... The majority of them, uh, well, mostly everyone there does not care for um, Rainier that much. Yeah, I find the uh, <laughs> rich uh, kids are never all that popular. Never have been, never will. <laughs> It's a little, little, little whistle and keep and, uh, not paying attention. So they said with the snake, is uh, that symbol strike a chord of any of us? Maybe just ran away because he had such a horrible name. 
Um, you do know that the that a snake symbol is really the um, the symbol of the Centaurum. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Well, interesting. I'm going the quest with you just so I can keep crap straight. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a little scared. Quest scared? Yes. I dragged the link into my notes, but I doubt it won't work once the book, book's closed. Uh, it is also uh, under the uh, Party Sheet XP. You can access it there as well. Excellent. Oh, we don't see the XP only use. That's a GM only. Well, I guess you're screwed then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said, I mean, I dragged the. I have a link now in my notes. I've been trying to keep spelling not included, so I can click on the link. It lets me open it, but sometimes they stop working. Yeah. It is or is not. I when I click on it right now, I'm working, but I'm assuming one time you'll like close the book and it'll stop working. But right now, I can re click on it, be able. To re so I'm good. And then, then uh, well, as he's saying, Zentarum, then I click back to, and I turn to uh, the other, uh, my companion, he says, I go, isn't that a uh, half work we helped out uh, from the Zentarum? Bro, he kind of shrugs. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Was she? Uh, let's find out. I think she's someone, so I, I may have been, maybe remember her wrong, but I thought she was a mech, because she got in a fight with them because they were killing her, that guy, the five peak guys were killing her people, her friends, and so Uh, yeah, she, she <laughs> is, um... She is tied in to the Zentarum. She might not be a full-blooded member, but, you know, does have connections there. Okay. And I can't remember if you even asked her name. Uh, Yagra Stonefist. Yeah. Okay, but uh, pretty much that is all the information that you are able to um, um, get from them at the Skewered Dragon. Dragon. Okay. I go, okay. Second, and I'll find out where we're actually headed to next. So sorry, did we decide to go to the warehouse next, or are we going to go hunting for Yak? That's what I was thinking. I think I'll turn to the group on who goes in well. Maybe she'll be able to give us some information, or maybe a, a way in of what happened to get into a fight. That's a good idea. That probably means going back to the Yawning Portal. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because, I mean, we had no real way of figuring out what she was. Maybe Dern would know something. 
Mm. Or someone. Or someone, sure. sure. Can we ask somebody on the street, like some uh, some street urchin who's familiar with all the local uh, thief types? If they know, probably could. But keep in mind that there's about like two hundred thousand people in Waterloo. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, you do know that. Um... That it is on Candle Lane, as far as uh, where the warehouse is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we do? Go to Candle Lane or go to uh, back to the tavern? Oh, uh, before we go to the warehouse, let's let's try going to the yawning portal and see if we can hunt. Okay. Hunt down Niagara. You got a... The background I took is faction aging. I don't know if I'd be able to use this to get information. I'd be able to find her. My safe house feature. As a faction agent, you have access to a secret network of supporters and operators who can provide assistance in your venture. On your venture, you know... A set of secret signs and passwords you can use to identify such operatives who provide you with access to hidden safe houses and free room and board or an assistance in finding information. These agents never risk their lives for you or risk revealing their true identity. That's something I could try playing into? It probably partly depends on what faction. You know, some of them probably wouldn't care about yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of working it out that I'm part of the Harper faction. The good old Harpers. <laughs> um, the, as you leave uh, the Skewered Dragon headed back to it toward the yawning portal. Um, uh, you just happen to uh, walk down Candle Street. You know, it's on the way. And... You come across Jack B. Nimble. Uh, you can see... Um, this warehouse uh, standing at the back of an outer yard and it's got a high fence around it and you know uh, on the fence uh, you can see a, uh, a snake like sign well I guess we find And, uh, you know, just roughly, uh, you can see that there's three points of, uh, entry just, you know, peeking through the little holes in the fence. Um, uh, you can see a large warehouse loading door. Um, ah, okay. There's a front door, a large warehouse loading door, and, um... A painted over window and you know you can see on the front door that they have one of the little sliding peepholes hmm. no obvious guard uh, not on the outside Interesting. Should we just keep on headed to the young portal? See if we can find a uh, stone fist. 
Well, since we're here anyway, and Bra is going to uh, trundle all off to the front door and sort of listen at it and see if he hears anything. And I'll look behind us to see if anyone had followed us from this cute dragon, which I remember that. Okay, um... Bry, you can hear some, uh, hear some activity from happening inside the warehouse. Um, so you do know that it's occupied, but you really can't tell what's going on inside, and Damon, uh, you didn't see anyone following you from Skeered Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, Bri will, after sort of listening at the door, will go over to the window and see if there's, you know, if it's completely painted over, if there's any, you know, any way to see any. Um... No, the, the the windows have been painted on the inside, so you can't even scrape any paint off to look. And they've done a uh, pretty good job of, uh, you know, preventing people from looking in. Makes you wonder what they have to hide. Probably some contraband and kidnap victims. Uh, you do know that the black net, the black network, the Zentarums, uh Their main business is recruiting, training, and equipping mercenaries. Yeah. So you're not totally surprised that they have a uh, blacked out, locked warehouse <laughs> we bring us should we uh, knock on the door or go get some more information before we try anything oh I do hate to think of them holding anyone in there such a drab place to be so boring but maybe we'd be better off going to see if we can and down Yagra and see if she knows anything about this. Uh -huh. Sounds good to me. All right, I'll go along with that. Okay, going back to the portal. You know, Dorham says, "Howdy, <laughs> welcome back." We just couldn't stay away. Do we see Yagra at all? Is she around or anything? Uh, no, you are not seeing Yagra. And, you know, asking uh, Durham about him, you know, he says, uh, he hasn't seen her since, uh, last night. Well, given our choices to either find her or, um, break into that warehouse, maybe we should stick around here until dark and see if she shows up. Then we can always go back to the warehouse. We could ask if anybody knows her where she stayed. We can. And see if there's anyone here at the moment. And again, if not, it'll get busier in the evening than it probably is at, you know, two in the afternoon. 
Uh, yes, uh, went to portal. Um, <clears throat> talking to the bar patrons at this time of day, you know, uh, the ones that do know of her haven't seen her today. And a lot of people don't know her at all. Okay. I'll find this table with a, a shadowy corner I can sit in and just observe the room and watch it. Okay. Uh, throughout the day, you can see uh, people coming and... You know, having a few drinks, and you're there longer than they are, so you get to see them leave as well. You know, you'd probably make more friends if you took that table over by the fire. <laughs> Just gonna exert for now, my friend. Just gonna exert. Fine. Yeah, sure, every so often you're looking down the well to make sure there's not another troll coming up. Yeah. It's gonna say, "Find in life, we just sit quietly in the shadows. Things will reveal itself that people don't want you to." It happens too if you're out in the light, yelling and running around. It's a lot more fun that way too. Yeah, I'm not stopping you from giving it a try. I'll just watch your back, make sure no one comes out. But uh, the day passes, and you know you've seen and talked to many people, and they either don't know her or haven't seen her today. Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, everybody in town is going to know that we're looking for her now. Which we might even be as a advantageous for us too. Yeah. Well, on the flip side. Uh, you haven't met or talked to anyone that you think might be a Zentarum. Okay. They don't serve their kind in here. Well, I guess we're going to have to spend another night here. Or we could go to the warehouse. Yeah, let's, let's go check out the warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so... Okay. Okay. Alright, and then you're going back to the warehouse. And guys, I need to step AFK for just a minute and make a bathroom make a break. bathroom break. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Be right back.
second to reconnect. Uh, yeah. We have a uh, <laughs> my business partner pushed away from his desk and uh it's got a uh, power strip coming unplugged out of the wall. <laughs> mm. okay. Which uh controls our uh switch that's connected to our router, so <laughs> That explains the, the dropping. Okay, uh, you are back at the warehouse. See any lights on or all? Uh, yes, uh, you can see uh, some lights uh, brightening up the painted over windows. I think, ladies and gentlemen, should we uh, lock the perimeter first? Inconspicuous, inconspicuous like. I suppose we could do that. Anybody have any special uh, thief abilities that would get them inside? Not me. I don't know if you want to try to sneak break in. Especially in a place that's probably got trained mercenaries and mercies and mid training in it. Yeah. Well, does anybody have an idea of how we're going to get in? Pick the lock! Or does okay. lock, on, lock on the door and ask for stonefish? No. Okay. Well, you can do that. I'll stand over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming it's late at night, so there'd be no point to do that. Yeah, probably not the best time to come and knock on the door. But uh, you can hear uh, some commotion coming from inside the place. And... Hmm. Well, then maybe we could knock on the door. Nah, Brian will try to lock. Okay. You only have three entrances. Which one is your girl's part? Yeah. Well, there won't. You can't pick the lock on the window. No, when the loading door probably doesn't make sense. So he's oh, going to the. Main entrance, okay. Can we find? Do we have any way to figure out if there's somebody near the main entrance that would know that we're picking the lock? Are we listening at the door? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can uh, try a perception. All right, is that what we're doing then? Late. I'm already picking the lock. <laughs> well, we'll stand back in the shadows just a little bit away to make sure no one jumps out at them from behind or coming out Okay, I'll be off to the side. Got my rapier out. Harry's probably doing our normal uh, a missing person thing, getting drunk. Oh, you know he is. <laughs> oh, I think it's got booted from the game. You got booted quite a while ago. Oh, wow. Is this showing me the room right now getting looted? Boot it. <laughs> I knew we were short one. <laughs> Give me a second. 
it was all standing in the shadows. No one didn't notice that you were. <laughs> I'm going to uh, try and listen and see if there's anybody by the door for uh, Pry opens it. Oh, why would you want to do that? Well, we heard a commotion, so we know there's something going on. Yeah, but do we know if there's somebody right next to the door? Uh, you can hear sounds that are close by, but they don't appear to be coming from right beside the door. Okay, that's fine. And let Damon connect and I'll share a new map with you. So we don't save my chat position anymore. Well, I think she heard everything at the door. Into the next ten centuries. <laughs> and I was just checking to see if I'm still in the server. Okay. Um, But that is the warehouse that you are at, and Bri, you uh, did manage to uh, pick the lock on the door. We might be on the long, wrong way. That wouldn't surprise me. There's Bri. There's many layers, like an onion. We gotta peel them back before we can do anything. Looks right to me. Make sure everyone else is on the right layer. Uh. Okay, um, you can, as you're opening the door and whatnot, um, you can see that tables and chairs have been care carelessly tossed across the floor. Uh, you can see the corpses of a dozen men lying along the walls and you can see that their rapiers and daggers are um, lying nearby and on the north side of the area you can see that the stairs are rising to an open level above and we see any movement in there oh yes you are. excuse me I got the hiccups uh, yes, you do see movement inside, and you see four of these uh, short avian creatures. They got these long beaks and black feathers, and, you know, um, as you step in, they look over in surprise, and you can see each one of them is wearing a hooded cloak and wielding a short sword. And the bodies we see, we see the ground, do they have identifying marks on them? Um, yeah, the, um, five of them, uh, you know, they just look like your run-of-the-mill thugs. Um, Seven of them, uh, you can tell for sure that they are 
Xanathar guild thugs. Uh, they're all they're dressed all in dressed leather in armor. Leather. And wait. Uh, on the five um, that look like the thugs, uh, you can see a black tattoo of a winged snake either on the neck or on the forearm. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I only see four. No, these are those are talking about. Oh, okay. Oh. oh. Yeah, you you, yeah, you got corpses laying, laying everywhere. everywhere. Uh, I see. Uh, five of them are Zents. Uh, seven of them are um, Xanathar guild members. Our guild members. Okay. So it looks like these guys, the Xanthar guys and the, and the Xantran guys were in fighting, and these guys broke in and killed them. Okay. Oh, that's out of character because I have no idea what's going on. So. Yeah, just a guess. <laughs> there. So, anyway, as you're opening the door, you know, uh, these bird creatures uh, look at you and. They start to advance towards you. Did you kill all these people? Bad bird. Hey, we're not with them. We don't have any quarrel with you. I have quarrel with them. Okay. <laughs> um, and with that, you know, uh, they pull out their uh, their short swords and start to move toward the door. So let's roll for initiative. Well, maybe they're going to the back door. It's okay. Dern can take them off. <laughs> You probably should have invited him to come along. Okay. And it's like tokens. And one runs over closer to toward the door. And and another one moves down south uh, I'm gonna delay my turn a little bit there till, uh, after break and my turn is going to consist of tossing demon in the room and running <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can see that uh, number 16 sheaths his sword and he picks up a bow. And. Number 5 does the same thing. Okay, um, I'm trying to decide which spell to use here. Um, I was thinking, uh, charm person, but if we're, if they're already, like, it says that if we're, if we're fighting them, they get a, they get a bonus to their same throw, but are we actually fighting them yet, or, or have we not started fighting them? You would be drawing first blood. But Okay, so so they would get a bonus to save the draw. Okay. Alright. 
Um, in that case, how many hit dice of does uh, sleep effect? Um, you should have a number of dice you have to roll. Yeah, I'm looking at this spell right now. Uh, 5d8. It's, it's not hit dice, it's hit points. Oh, okay. So... You'll need to be in line of sight if I remember correctly. Okay. So, like, if, if they're, like, they have a certain number of hit points, they're immune? No, so you roll the 5d8, and it'll affect... It'll hurt, affect the first person if that's in that number of hit points, and then it'll move on to the next person that's in that number, okay. number of hit points. Okay, um... Oops. I think I might use this in whispers again. Um, yeah, that one looks good. I'm gonna do that. I still need to be in the room to do it. What's that? Oh, I need to yeah. be in the room? Just don't you need line of sight to be able to cast? Okay, so let me see. If I go right there, can I uh, cast it on him? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. Okay, good. So roll a 5d8, and we'll see uh, how many you put to sleep. She can no, I, I want to do listening whispers instead. Oh. You just need to target them all. You should have a save, I think. But you don't get to target them all. You only get to target one with dissident whispers. Oh, I thought... Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, right. Right. Hold on a second. I'm pretty sure it hurts. Ah, uh, yeah, you're correct. It's only one target. Yeah, yeah sleep is a 20 foot. I guess I'll go with sleep then. It's a 20 foot radius, or 20 foot range. For sleep? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. So I'd only be able to get that one guy by the stairs if I use sleep. No, it's the circle, the 20 foot circle that's on oh, the map. Okay, so I roll 868. Uh, Is that what you said? 5d8. Uh, 5d8, uh, okay. Okay. That one. Is asleep. I guess he's the only one that's affected. And that's 19, so we got 9 left. And number eleven, cool, good. Is unconscious, and that gives you three left. And yeah, <clears throat> you got two of them. That's awesome. That's a good start, Anna. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> All right, Bry. Don't forget to mark off a spell slot. Right, I am. Alright, Bri will run into the room. I don't know why you killed these Ben, but totally unnecessary. 
and he's going to hurl a dart at King Kufa. I'll move up to there. Walk along, I'm reaching into my Carson pouch, pulling out the greetings you need that cast Fireball. And I'll cast on the one that uh, Brea saw. Ah, jeez. <laughs> And number one's asleep, number eleven's asleep, and sixteen is gonna try to shoot a bow at Bry, and does hit, hopefully doesn't kill him. Close. And this one's going to take a five foot step north and he's going to fire his bow at Anna, which uh, slams into one of the kegs beside Anna. <laughs> Is it my turn again? It is yep. your turn. Okay. Let's see. You know what? Since that sleep spell worked so well, I think I'll do it again. Sure, because you may hit Bray too, since it's a 20 foot radius. Oh, okay. Um, you can just push it back. That's true. Yeah, I can, uh, you can move it so it only affects those two. Yep, thanks. Okay, 26. And we have two more that are unconscious. Awesome. Well, how long are they unconscious for? I can't remember. Uh, one minute. Okay. So we better hurry. What do we do? There are no more immediate threats, so what do you want to do? Well, I'd say we quickly tie them up and strip them all their weapons. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I Try Bry's not going to. It's going to take more than a minute to tie yeah. them yeah. up. I also have He's going, huh? going to go club them in the head with his quarter staff. Okay, good idea. I also have a set of manacles. I can get one of them uh, quickly. <laughs> I remembered this time. <laughs> and Bray kills them all with one hit. Bry. No way, no way. So okay. Bry kills them all with one hit. I'm not killing I'm them, I'm one thing the quarters. quarters. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna go and put manacles on the one that's by the stairs. So we okay. don't have to kill him. Will that work on Kenkis? Do they have arms and hands that will that the manacles will fit? 
Uh, they can hold a sword and fire a bow, so yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And I'll start tying up the ones that Bri knock out. Uh, and, uh, are you? Yeah. Did you attack eleven or five? Bry is going to um, or both. try to knock out five and sixteen and leave eleven to Damon. Okay, I'll tie up eleven then, as I dearm it too as quickly as I can. Yeah, I did not take away any weapons or anything else on it that I had found. And Bri, you're just trying to knock them out even more? Yeah, I'm just, you know, actually trying to, you know, instead of letting them wake up in a minute, I'm clubbing them in the head to put them to sleep for, you know, <laughs> oh. That's a good idea. Uh, really good problem. Because um, I think it's an advantage and a cattle crit when you're not conscious. Well, within five feet. Okay, so you have knocked those two out. You got one manacled and one tied up. And Strip them of everything that might be of interest and their weapons. Do they have any markings or anything? Uh, no, they do not. You can uh, let the two wake up and interrogate them. Yeah, I think maybe we should uh, gag them or something too so that they don't start yelling and making a lot of noise. Gag them too. Yeah, you know, we can, like, you know, take, take the gag out so that they can talk to us. <laughs> but, like, might be a good idea to ha have it ready. <laughs> Gag him, drag him. Yeah. Put him in. A I want to uh, have a thought. So, this is Zantorum place, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm gonna go see if the Xanthor guys were killed here, or the bodies were placed here. If I can figure that out. Yeah, from from what you can tell, um, it happened here. Do we see any? Do we see any signs that people have been kept here? Like, are there you know chairs with ropes around them or anything? Um, in the current state of disarray, you're not able to determine that. Do we see any papers or any correspondence or anything of that? Um, you can see a, um, the door to the storage closet right there is uh, slightly ajar. Interesting. Brian, we'll run over and check out the closet. I'm gonna try to find some more rope to tie up the other two people that are uh, oh, not yet. I've got 50 feet of rope. You can just have some of that. So I'll make sure they're all tied up and secured before we start moving around. Yeah. And I come prepared this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, um, Bri, um, as you get to the door, uh, you can see it's hanging ajar because its hinges are broken. And before you even get to the door, you can smell the strong odor of sour fish and vinegar. And vinegar. Dinner! <laughs> somebody from uh, Norway in there? And you're going to open the door? Yeah, I'm going to pull it open anyway. Okay. Um, opening the door, uh, you can see that it's filled with, uh, it's a storage closet. And, and it's got discarded ropes, it's got um, canvas tarpaulins and you can see some splintered wood from smashed barrels and you can hear ragged breathing coming from underneath one of the tarpaulins I will Pulled aside as much as my feeble halfling strength will enable. Come out, whoever you are. Don't make me come in under there with you. <laughs> and uh, you can see that uh, this gentleman is hiding underneath the tarps and you can see that he's had uh, rope burns on his uh, wrist but he is uh, was trying to be just as quiet as possible if you're not with the Zentarum or Xanathars or the, the Weird bird people here. You have nothing to fear from. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, you you see that he's unarmed. Uh, he is marred by all this grime and this lingering stench of rancid pickle herring. And you know. Uh, why, thank you, young halfling. Uh, I appreciate you uh, rescuing me. You're welcome. I don't appreciate your sad smell. What are you doing in there? And who are you? Um. He tells you that, uh, you know, he's, uh, Renard Neverwinter, never remember, whatever in the hell it is, <laughs> and, you know, that, uh, he was abducted, and has been held here prisoner for a couple of days. No, it isn't, Anna. Um, oh, you don't happen to know someone by the name of Floon, do you? Uh, yes, I, I was with Floon when we got taken. Is he in there with you too? Does he smell as bad as you do? <laughs> well, Floon's never smelt that good to begin with. And he kind of laughs and he's like, uh, we were at the Skeered Dragon and Floon and I, you know, we're playing cards and having a few drinks, and I was concerned that Floon was just too intoxicated to find his way home by himself. So, you know, I offered to escort him, and on the way, um, we had just left Fillet Blay Lane, and we were headed north on Zastro Street, 
and we were jumped by these uh, five thugs. Can I tell if he's uh, telling the truth or not? Uh, it was an insight. You sure can. Or possibly not. Probably not. Um, and you all think that he's um, being honest. Okay. And uh, you know, uh, he he says, you know, uh, I I hate that we were captured, and uh, you know, um, I really feel guilty that Floon was taken. And because uh, I really think that they mistook Floon for me. Do they look alike? Uh, no, they don't. Oh, I'll just uh, pipe in through the door. What makes you think they you think Floon was? Um, uh, ask maybe we should let him out of there. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you mind if I get, out of, I get out of the smelly storeroom store first? <laughs> I suppose. She seems to be in a pretty pickle there. <laughs> that was bad. I'm sorry. I was holding on to that for too long. And, uh, you know, um, Renar says, um, you know, the Zentarum think that my father embezzled a large amount of gold while he was the open lord, and that he hid the dragon somewhere in the city. And just a reminder, dragons are what they call gold pieces in water deep. And, um, you know, um, they think that, they think that you, that they're able, they'll be able to find it using an artifact called the Stone of Galore, and which was in the hands of the Xanathar Guild until recently. And apparently someone stole it. And the Zents thought that I may know something about all this, but I don't. I haven't spoken to my father in years. Did he embezzle the money? Uh, I personally don't believe that he did. And if he did, I don't know anything at all about it. And, you, you know... Him? It was dark when they got attacked, and, uh, uh, you know, they brought us here, and they uh, left me here with some of the guards, and they, they took Floon somewhere else. They didn't happen to say where, did they? And did you hear anything being said when these two sides fighting until the Birdman showed up? Uh, yeah, you know, the, the Birdman fought, and by this time, uh, you know, you can see two of them are wearing out the, um, have the sleep spell is wearing off, and that they are conscious. Hey, um, uh, can I cast the, uh, friend's cantrip? or friendship, whatever it's called. I'm one of those guys. Uh, yeah, you sure can. Awesome. Let's see. Where is that? Uh, here we go. Um... Mm. 
I'll cast it on the, uh, the one by my character. How, how do I do that again? I'm trying to... Uh, all you have to do is, uh, oh, for, for this one, just drag the effect over to number... One. I didn't see the effect button. Okay, I got it. And, yeah, as he's waking up, you, you know, uh, he is not hostile towards you. Right. Okay. So, hey, friend, what happened? Who are you? Where are you here? <laughs> okay. Um, these... Uh, you gonna take the gag out of his mouth first? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, better keep the other one quiet. Uh... Uh, it, it truly sounds like a parakeet. Uh, you know, you ask, you who, ask who, him, are you, who are you, why are you, why here? Are you here? And it replies in this deep voice with this orcish accent. Xanathar sends its regards. Okay. That's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> was that its normal voice? Do they normally have that kind of? Uh, you're you're thinking? Uh, no, that's not its normal voice. I see. Okay. Hmm. Okay. What's yeah, it doing? Yeah. Is it reacting in any way to this weird voice? Uh, it, no, it's it's just um, um uh, you know, it it's a it's a par or it's a parrot with an orcish accent right uh, now. Right now. Okay. Huh. And yes, uh, a few seconds later, uh. It says in a very thin, nasally voice, Tie up the pretty boy in the back room. And Why? Then, and then follow the yellow signs in the sewers. Okay, so that's Xanathar telling us to do that? Is what I'm guessing. Or he... From the hints we're getting, it could be that they're just carrying him back with and said. Say that again? Actually, what do we know of Cancun? Do any of us know? Oh, of it's repeating what was said to it. Oh, I see. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. About, what do we know? Do any of us know anything about Cancun? Uh, they, they are feathered humanoids that wander the world as vagabonds. Uh, uh. They are driven by greed, and they can perfectly imitate any sound that they hear. That they hear. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's just repeating what was said to it. Okay. Well, we don't know for sure, but it's that's the interpretation. Yeah, that's what it's. Okay. Yeah, and you know, from from what little bit of lore you might know about them. Um, they are uh, intelligent creatures. Uh, however, they, they speak in pantomime. Um, you know, if, if, if they're asking for money, they might make the sound of coins clicking together. They really they, don't have any language of their own, like uh, normal nice speech. It's like talking to a damn parrot. <laughs> okay, that that explains it. All right. And let's see. Do they have any markings on them that make them that make them believe that they're connected to the guild? 
We already looked. They didn't have any marking. And the uh, other bodies in here, they all had, did, did, besides the ones for the Xantorum, did the other ones have markings for the Xantorum? Uh, yes, uh, the, one, the, the Xanathar guild members, uh, you can see a black tattoo on the palm of the right hand. And it looks like a circle with uh, ten spokes radiating out from the center. You know, like a beholder. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the, the bird is uh, being friendly with Ananuska, and, you know, this time you hear a scratchy voice, and it says, uh, No time to loot the place. Just get him to the boss. <laughs> I, I say, where's the boss? No time oh, to okay. loot. No time to loot. <laughs> okay, okay. Probably in the sewers past the gold markings. Right, okay, got it. I'll pick up one of the weapons we disarmed off these uh, things, and I'll go over to those both sides, the bodies, and see the weapons. If I can tell if the weapons are not the uh, no, you're not finding any magical weapons. No, I've just seen that the, the weapons that the birds were using match the wounds on both bodies. Both trying, bodies. He's trying to play coroner. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm assuming this probably can't do it. Probably to make a little medicine or something. CSI See Waterdeep. I think it's a pretty good uh, bet that the weapons are would match the wounds. Uh, you are able to match uh, the wounds with the weapons, and you're pretty confident, uh, you know, the blood on the walls and the floor, you know, help point out that, hey, this battle did take place here, and the Kinku, um, with what they're saying, you're pretty confident that they come in with uh, the Xanathar guild members. And okay. it was just a battle that went badly. Oh, so they were on the side of the, the ones, the Xanathar guild members that are dead? Yes. Okay. Well, if they want another member here, we may want to get him out of here to someplace safe and figure out where Flume is. Yeah. And maybe... Flag down some guards and tell them what we came across when we rescued this guy? Yeah. Maybe there'll be some uh, reward for saving the son of the former open. He's not very popular in Waterdeep, so, you know, we might actually get in trouble. For oh. <laughs> what about his father? Wouldn't his father give us a reward? Father's in Neverwinter. Oh, okay. Um, do you want to search the place before you leave? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Go down and maybe they might want to gag the bird before we go. Yeah, I'm going to gag the, the bird guy again. Hey, hey sorry, buddy. I got to put this back in. Worst friend ever. Xanathar <laughs> Sensory. <laughs> so, um, you want me to roll anything if I'm looking? No, that's okay. Um, and I'm going to share one of the old maps with you. Wasn't there an upstairs to this place, too? It's open. Like, I can walk, a catwalk, or, ah. you know, a loft. There's no reason we can't go up there and see what's up there as part of our search. It's not like it's a whole separate floor. 
Oh, there you go. It is partly a separate form of Um, looking around, uh, we're just gonna start on the ground floor. Uh, right here, uh, you do find a, um, a secret room. Oh, fascinating. If I can get it to unmask, there we go. And, um, when you open the door, um, you can hear the faint sound of a bell ringing coming from upstairs. And inside the room, um, close out a few windows. So like it's warning people on the second floor. And um, in the secret room, uh, you do find two wooden crates. And uh, in the first wooden crate, uh, you find four wood framed paintings that are wrapped in leather. Um, the paintings depict the cities of Luskin, Neverwinter, Silvery Moon, and Baldur's Gate. And, you know, not being art critics, but you figure they're probably worth about 75 gold pieces apiece. And the second crate, um, you open it up and you find 15 bars and they're they're black bars but you can tell that the um, they're black from corrosion and you know taking a dagger and scraping on the bar uh, you find that they are 10 pound silver trade bars and even though they are corroded, they're still worth about 50 gold pieces each. Okay. Do you want to take them? We should at least confiscate them. Definitely. We can hand them over to the authorities if we have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the paintings at least. Yeah, we can tell them, hey, we found one of these silver bars. <laughs> okay. Um, going upstairs, uh, you can see that the uh, open level is uh, stacked with crates and overlooks the uh, floor of the main warehouse. And just doing quick searches through the crates, you're finding all sorts of junk. Uh, there's moth-eaten bolts of cloth, uh, bottles of spoiled olive oil, and hundreds of pairs of wooden-soled sandals that were all the rage last summer, but are now out of fashion. And not, nothing you come across is uh, valuable at all. Um, go for it. And... Also upstairs, um, you find a suite of offices, and they have desks and chairs and bare shelves covered with dust and draped in cobwebs, and as you move around, occasionally you'll see a, a rat that skitters out of the way. And, you know, um, you do notice that mounted uh, above each office door, is a uh, a still alarm bell and you can tell by following the wires that they are connected to the uh, secret room downstairs 
and first and most importantly, can Bry find a, a pair of halfling size wooden sold sand? You dig around, but eventually uh, you do find a pair your size. They accidentally fall into his backpack. Just don't wear socks with them. He also, uh, he plucked a feather from whether the Ken Okay. <laughs> I like it. You're gonna be stylish before this game's over. Ken straight. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be the first halfling fashionista. I'm gonna order a Komodo for you. And uh, as you're searching the office, um, you find this magic sheet of parchment. Ooh. Can I identify it? Me, um, is identify a, a first level or spell or is it cantrip? It's a fir it should be a spell, a first level spell. Oh, okay. Well, I won't be able to cast it. Uh, identify uh, it tomorrow then, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm not too much of a stickler on identifying items. Items. Okay. Um, uh, most items, uh, if if you touch a magic item, you get this feeling of power. So you do know that you are holding a magical item regardless of whether or not you know what it does. And um, let's try um, an arcana roll, if you would. Okay. I'll help to study that. Okay. And Damon, uh, you're pretty sure that it is a paper bird. Which, um, you, you take this magical sheet of parchment and you write a message of 50 words or less on the parchment. And then you speak a creature's name, and the parchment magically folds into a tiny paper bird, and then it flies off to the recipients whose name that you mentioned. And you got a nice little image they included on that. Cool. Hey, it's uh, Bry with his feather. Hmm. I'll, I'll take the piece of parchment and just stick in the backpack. Okay, give me just a second. I'll throw that in a party sheet. When he falls asleep, I'll steal it from him. <laughs> Okay, and that is uh, pretty much all you find in the top layer of the warehouse. Did we get the guards' attentions and show them what's going on here? Well, you know, it's funny. You, you go back downstairs and you're making sure that all your prisoners are tied up and, you know, you find... Renard and Renard by this time has um, he has scavenged uh, for himself a dagger and a rapier okay and for, 
He's armed now, but not hostile towards you. He's very thankful. And uh, this, the battle has happened fairly recently. And it was during the battle that Renard was able to, uh, you know, cut his ropes and hide in the storeroom while the Zents and the Zentarum were fighting one another. And, and uh, you know, as, as you're all standing there making sure of the prisoners and discussing what to do, uh, the front door gets kicked open. And you see this captain of the city watch barging into the warehouse. And he's got a dozen veteran guards with him. And their weapons are drawn and so forth. And they immediately see you and tell you to drop your weapons. I put my hands up and say, uh, we were just here rescuing, uh, uh, Ren Renar. Ren yeah, hell met, good friends. Uh, this is not what it seems. We were just here looking for a friend, uh, for a person, for a friend. Yeah, we, uh, we captured these, uh, uh, mercenaries of Xanthar for you. You can question them. They'll they'll confirm uh, that they, you know what we told you. I doubt they'll confirm it. They will if I cast friendship on them. And you do remember that they can only parrot back what you told them. Right. Well, they'll confirm that what they what they heard. I stand behind Damon and shake my head while you know making a throat cutting gesture behind his. <laughs> uh, the the guards rush in and you know they're they kind of push you all together and you got the um they round up the kinku and put them in and make sure that they're all tied up and the captain of the guard looks over at Renard and you know Renard nods and the other guy nods and you can tell that they at least know of one another and yeah. the captain goes over and talks to Renard for a minute and um you notice that the captain of the guard when when he saw Renard and was walking over you know, he kind of straightened up his uh, uniform and stood up a little bit straighter and, you know, just trying to look very professional. And him and Renard talked for a minute. And um, if they arrest us, we blame it all on Harry Toe. Okay. I give a nod. <laughs> and uh, you know, they they talk and so forth and uh you can overhear Renard telling the story and so forth. And he goes on and he motions for the guards to uh, you know, release you all that you're not in any threat. He is believing that you all were that you all innocently stumbled in into this affair. Alright. Good. And um, you know, he says that uh, they had had reports of suspicious activity and that, you know, um, this warehouse um, uh, that this warehouse had been under surveillance before but 
you know, um, he had to pull the detail in order to uh, bolster the patrols in the dock ward, which is a decision that he now regrets that, you know, they're trying to catch a big fish that's supposed to be responsible for much of the strife, but that's all he says on the matter. And um, I'll tell him exactly what the bird said to him about where to take the tie up, pretty boy. Yeah. I told him, I'll tell him to take over Grand Salt. I don't know if they're probably telling us the truth. He's like, I, I, I appreciate you being forthcoming with this information, but I'm not going to send a, a troop of guards into the sewer for someone who might be a Zent or a Zentarum spy. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, you, know, you know, if the two guilds want to destroy each other, why not let them? Just keep the blood off the streets. I agree. And... Um... Yeah, you all told him that you were there looking for Flume, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah, uh... The captain of the guard says, uh, you know, you're you're free to go, but I'm going to tell you, you need to leave the dirty business to the city watch. It's best not to meddle in criminal matters. But, and, but and, he just said he's not going to go into the sewer. Bride just tucks his tongue and shakes his head. Uh, yes, uh, you know, the sewers are too dangerous to, you know, we'll set up watches and for Floon and if we see him, we'll find him interrogating then. But, you know, you know, not all city watch officers are as nice as me. And he's looking around and... Um... He's like, uh, you know, uh, just because of the good deed that you did and, you know, uh, helping to save a member of royalty, I'm going to overlook the crimes that you have committed here today. And with that, uh, he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out several flyers of which he gives each one of you and it's a copy of the law right did we actually uh, do anything that's against one of these um the the can you and so forth were actually you know they're considered citizens of water deep oh okay i see so you so, know you could be imprisoned for up to 10 days, flogged, and pay damages. Uh, Even though they were a criminal? Uh, stealing merchandise, uh, you know, even though it was stolen merchandise, uh, it's still uh, burger burglary. Burglary. Okay. What merchandise have we stolen? He, he probably guesses that we've stolen some merchandise. But, uh, well, uh, I, that was out of character. The the painting yeah, and yeah, the, the silver bars. So, and the sandals. Don't forget, Don't forget my sandals. Me. Oh, yes, that is a capital offense. <laughs> yeah, wearing sandals is should be... <laughs> Those are just... I didn't steal them. I, you know, they just... They're suited. Um, and also, uh, speaking of what you did find, uh, if you go to fence the paintings, uh, you know, um, that's a fine equal to the, uh, 
the value of the stolen goods. Okay. I was actually going <laughs> to... Since when the guards got here, I was going to suggest to the group, this is not a character that we might want to hand over the painting soon. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty 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 good idea. I'm trying to walk out the front door. I'm trying to walk out the front door. Guards around. I think right. that'd be awesome. We, we could we could do that. We could tell them, hey, you know, we we happened to find these things that they had stolen, and we're turning them in as law law abiding citizens should. Well, we don't actually know that they're stolen. You know, maybe they oh. just like to keep their art locked away in their secret. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, the captain of the guard is. Uh, you know, he's extremely happy to recover the uh, the paintings, and let's see. You know, he's just going to hang them in his own room, or his own house. That uh, that you know, they had had reports of um, a crate of paintings being stolen from the dock ward. A while ago. A while And you're gonna mention the silver bars or just just what's what silver bars? I don't yeah, know. I don't know if you wanna mention those. <laughs> silver bars. There were no silver bars here. But Yeah, my god, I love say no more. That's what we found in there, man. I'm glad to hand it over to you. Well, I appreciate you all being fine, upstanding citizens, and, um, you know, my, my name is Captain Staggett, and I hope I, uh, don't run into you again. <laughs> we'll try not to. Dad, Dad. Dad, you know, uh, he, as you're walking out, he's like, uh, you know, I hope you all leave this to the city watch. But if you don't, keep the blood off the streets, okay? Hey, we hey, just knocked them out. Of course, sir. And I'll say to him, yeah, of course, we knocked them out, and we were actually just discussing how we should get one of you guys to come here to check this. And I'm being yeah. truthful. Yeah, we were telling, we were trying, talking about going to get the guard. He's kind of rude, saying he didn't want to run into us again. I thought we were getting along really oh. well. Uh, I don't mind it. I grab uh, Bri by the, the, high, the shoulders and lead him out the door and see more than that. Never mind, guy will follow. <laughs> uh, w would you like to, uh, everyone, make an insight check, please? Sure. You are you're you know that he really doesn't want to run into you again. Um, but on the flip side, the the last statement of you know keeping the blood off the streets, um, you kind of decipher a hidden meaning in that, and. What he was basically saying was, um, you know, sewers. the city watch does not care what happens in the sewer. Ah, yep, that makes Just sense. Don't let it happen out in public. Right. Okay. And, Damon, uh, you also suspect that he might be a little happy that you did some of his work for him. Good. And, you know, he gets credit for, uh, you know, uh, solving the suspicious activity and the arrest of uh, for Kenyu and Xanathar's guild. And, you know, overall, he's happy that the dead ones are dead. Okay. Okay. 
and look at the group and go up and just make it look like we should get up. Yeah, I think it's time to leave. Okay. Oh, yeah, Where would you like to go now? Well, maybe find a place to hold up for the night and get some rest. I think you might have got disconnected because you started cutting off. It. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, back to the yawning portal. Sure. sure. So I'm assuming the captain and the guard's going to take credit for all that. Does, uh, does Raynar have a, a place that uh, that he likes to go to for, you know, spending the night? Uh, Maybe a hotel or something? You know, uh, Raynar is happy to be free, and he's like, uh, where are you all headed? I guess we're going to go to the awning port. Good. I need a drink. <laughs> All right, and uh, you all go back to the yawning portal, and uh, you know the place is busy. And Doran walks over to you, and he's like, "Oh my God, what is that smell?" And he <laughs> looks at Renard, and you know Renard goes, "I know, I reek," and uh, he. It throws a coin over to Doran, and he's like, uh, I need a room with a bath for a little while. <laughs> then Doran's like, uh, yeah, I can do that. Just get the hell out of my bar. <laughs> You're going to not frighten, uh, what would be a good word. Uh, your odor is offensive. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Renar uh, grabs a room key and goes up and uh, takes a bath and you know about a half hour later he comes back down to the table to join you and he's like uh, I owe you all a debt of gratitude and let me buy you a round of drinks alright thank you I'll take a glass of milk I'll take a milk Pansy, Pansy. I'll take an ale too. Uh, this hey, when it gets person. here, when it gets here, I'll cast Mage Hand, have a slip under her table, and knock over the beer. <laughs> uh, love it. Okay. When uh, you go to bed tonight, you're going to feel something wet and squishy in your pillow. <laughs> I hesitate to ask what that may be. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. Fish from the closet. Uh, okay, uh, if you guys don't mind, can we take 10 here? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, see you in a few.
Hey, let's not be racist against halflings. <laughs> you should see how much halflings eat. I probably eat more than you. Probably, because I'm a half elf. That's gotta go somewhere. And tonight, it's going in your pillow. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, Rainier comes back and, uh, 
I love Facebook. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, anyway, Rainier comes back to the table, and, you know, he's joining you, and, you know, he's buying a couple round of drinks because he's not sure what would have happened had the Kenku found him instead of you guys. So he is uh, very thankful for it. You probably saved your life. Probably. Uh, yes, I, I'm sure that you did. And, you know, t telling more of the story about what happened with Floon. Um, you know, rumor has it that his dad, when he was an open lord, did embezzle some money. But, you know, that's all just rumors and hearsay and nobody's ever formally come out and said you know your father stole X amount of dragons it just hasn't happened and you know Rainier and his father have been estranged for many years and so he doesn't know the truth either hmm. What happened to your relationship with your father? He don't have to answer if you don't actually don't have that written. Uh, you know, without getting into personal, <laughs> um, he he doesn't go into it. He just well, said, you know, some shit happened, and that's where we're at now. Oh and, God. No you need know, to elaborate, I understand. Uh, he he feels bad about Floon, especially if it was mistaken identity, you know. He he really likes Floon. Floon is an upstanding person with dubious <laughs> motives. <laughs> do, do you know what Floon does? Um, you know, I don't think I even know what Floon does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just think I just for some reason I just flashed two other uh, chimney sweeps from uh, Mary Poppins. You're you're going to ask Floon to sweep your chimney for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Floon is, uh, you know, he's in uh, a little bit of everything, but, you know, for the most part, he's a uh, upstanding, decent individual. Uh, jack of all trades and master of none. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Anything that you can do to make a dragon floons into it. Interesting. So was it the... I'll look at other prints there. Oh, my is this. Was it the Xantarn or Xanathar guys that took uh, off? One more time. Uh, I was just wondering which faction took them away. Was it the Xantar, the Xantarum, or Xanathar? The Xantarum kidnapped Raynar and Flume. Yeah, and presumably yeah. Xanathar. Oh, no. Xantarum. Yeah, yeah the, the Xantarum uh, captured Flume and Raynar. And then uh, the Xanathar guild broke in and caused the battle and stole Floon. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't too sure because their names are so similar. <laughs> <in some. laughs> but I'm assuming one starts with a Z and the other starts with an A. Yep. Yep, sure does. I don't suppose you know anything about the Zentarum or the Zenith or the uh, well, you, you know, I, I've encountered, uh, both before, and, you know, um,
let's see. Um, yeah, he says, uh, you know, basically anybody can zo join the Xanathar Guild. And, you know, despite its name, it doesn't have official guild status. And he's not a member, but uh, he, he's heard that before you can become a member, you've got to pass a test. And that test always involves um, committing a serious crime. It might be murdering a guild member, uh, kidnapping a water Davian citizen, collecting a ransom, robbing a coach or looting a warehouse and um Jesus didn't we just do half of that? But no mask, right? <laughs> uh no mask. And uh really the retcon just a little bit. A very few uh Xanathar Guild, especially the low-ranking guild members, know that their boss is truly a beholder. Would make sense. And that the, the faction itself is fundamentally evil and, uh, you know, um, advancement through the guild is based upon, you know, how dedicated and determined and you know how good your ability is to dispose of your rivals that competition within the organization is fierce and often deadly she sounds like men's and baranza <laughs> or however that's pronounced That would be Jaraxxal Saxon in this mm -hmm. Which is a huge giveaway since he's right in the middle of the mat and screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no kidding. Uh, I'm not used to these. Uh, I figured, hey, might as well use a decal, but I keep thinking it's an <laughs> open window. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I find the D and D ones are actually pretty nice. Yeah. Okay. And we'll give you experience points for the Kinku. Did we get experience for the troll last week? I uh, yes, you did, but I did not pass it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, which you all are now second level. <laughs> Woohoo! Jeez, that wasn't from the troll, was it? Uh, that was from uh, breaking up the bar fight with Yarga, Yagra, and the troll. The troll was the majority of it. And 900 is the next level. Yep. Yeah. You might as well just take the time to level now if you want. Uh, yes, and uh, actually, since we're short, Sean, we may want to cut it a little short. Yeah, makes sense. Because there will be a nice little battle coming up. And I hadn't heard back, but I do have one guy who was interested in joining. And I'm going to go cool. ahead and post a message on the forum looking for another player. Cool. Although I like these smaller games better than the larger ones. And talking about the Zentarum, um, you already know that uh, 
they are a mercenary organization. Uh, they value tenacity and loyalty. Um, they're highly valued, but not necessarily essential traits for new members. Um, they trade mercenaries and goods, including weapons, for profit. And they have long sought to, to gain political influence here in Waterdeep. But the strength of the masked lords and the nobility and the professional guilds make it difficult. Um, um, they're a fractured organization. Uh, you got those who uh, support Manchun, who want to destroy Xanathar and seize the political and economic control. And those who support Xanathar want to expose and destroy Mansoon before they're before they are apprehended themselves or driven out of the city by local authorities. So you got Xanathar and Manchun who are, you know, leaders of um, the Black Network. Ooh. I can learn another spell. I think I'll take Detect Magic since I forgot to take that last play. That's probably a good spell to have. I think it's funny in the, the original character's manual book for this one, the deluxe one, the actually the char your character's class sheet actually has a link to the spells, spell casting, but it doesn't have it in all the other books when you take a class. Uh, just as a reminder, with spells, I've got uh, Rob Tui's, uh spell effects coding. set which uh, is a lot more uh, got a lot more effects coded than the basic uh, spell guides from the player's handbook oh that's cool I do not know where Rob finds the time yeah I can imagine because I think the Farnaby is awesome for Pathfinder. Uh, yeah, uh, Rob's books are Farnaby's. <laughs> are they? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I mean, he really went in detail, and he's also, um, there's a critically awesome extension available on DM's Guild. Um, they have a lot of it, it's like, um, oh, uh, Deluxe Oz's uh, DOE base extension. Then, you know, he added the locations on top of it and the sound extension. Um, I'm running it in one of the other games because uh, I've got a druid who does Wild Shape. And, oh my god, all the dude has to do is drag the effect over to the combat tracker. Uh, it changes the stats for whatever animal he's wild shaping into, changes the size of the icon, changes the icon itself to the animal he's changing into. And oh, cool. when you go back to the original one, you just delete the effect. <laughs> you might want to look into that for Abby for or a uh, while of her changeling thing. Or whatever yeah. she wanted to do. Uh, yeah, for for $10, uh, it was definitely worth it for me and my druid. Yeah, she's playing um, a shifter, so it's not a actual core class, but it's a creation. But 
It would, yeah, I mean it would help for the shape change part. She gets other stuff too that she'll still have to code in. True, yeah, true. Oh, so I think I'm pretty much done leveling. <laughs> well, I mean you drag your class over and you're pretty much done. Yeah, that's the best part about 5e and some adding things like sorcery points. It doesn't work as well as the Pathfinder thing, but it still works better than doing it manual. What? Two minutes to level up in 5e versus an hour? <laughs> in Pathfinder? Just got font the magic. Two sorcery points. Now, let me think I could actually do something. Well, I mean, at least you, you do get, get more choices in Pathfinder when you're level. But. You know, it's the trade-off. It's sometimes nice just to be able to drag and drop and not have to obsess over it for the next hour. I, I agree that with is that. true. Although it's great for those sessions where the DM is unprepared. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. We're an hour and a half in and you leveled. Guys, we might as well call it here. Spend the rest of the session. <laughs> uh, no kidding. I think for Curse of the Crimson Throne, I'm using the core rule book and the player's guide, and that's it. <laughs> okay, so you guys said all I have to do is uh, drag something onto my character sheet, and it'll automatically level me up? Yeah, you just drag your class. And that's in the player's handbook, right? I know. I know. Huh? I go for it. You, you can do it from the player's handbook, but if you go to the library module and at the top, you know, there'll be a big, you know, icon in the middle of the screen that says library and off to either side is GM and play and then create PC and all. If you change to create PC, it changes your buttons along the side. So one of the buttons that will be listed there is classes and you just open it up and you pick the class you want and you drag it onto the main page of your character sheet where it says class and level and that's just going to, when you drop it there, it's going to automatically add any of the features that you're supposed to have. Um, the only thing that you might have to do because you have spell casting is you'll have to manually pick any new spells you might get. Another way to do this, you go to your main character page, you go to open up your character sheet you go to the first page, main, you know where it has your class and level, where to sort your class. If you click on that magnifying glass right beside it, it'll bring up a sheet where you'd be entering the experience. Where, where your class is listed, if you go to the little um, icon right at the far right, the blue icon, and drag it and drop it on your class name, sorcerer, it would automatically love you that way too. If you're doing the same class at second level. Oh, that's true. If she's if you're multi-classing now, you'd have to do the other one from there. Just true. Never actually multi-classed in fighting. Generally speaking, multi-class isn't worth it. Yeah, most of the class do pretty good. I mean, once you get to higher levels, there's some classes you really don't need to go to max with. Uh, I posted that link to the Critically Awesome Essentials in Discord for you there, Darius. Cool. And, yeah, you know... Uh, my guy in my Saturday night game, as I've said before, is definitely a numbers guy. And multi-classing, you know, it, it's okay for lower levels, but when you actually get into the higher levels, having a class or two, or, you know, a couple levels and something else can actually hurt you tremendously. Yep. Yeah, because you don't get the. It takes longer for the proficiency to go up too, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you you know, if you're a spellcasting class and you have dipped in a non-spellcasting class level, you know, you're not getting your high-level spells at the right time. 
there are some builds that can use multi-classing very well. I mean, supposedly, like for instance, gunslingers, you know, you really don't have to go past fifth level if you want to do a gunslinger, and then you can just multi-class into fighter or swashbuckler or whatever else you want to do. A lot of gunslingers. I guess that must have been after they uh, had him in uh, World of Warcraft. Um, it, it's just a class, a Pathfinder class. It's you know, oh, okay. you know. Yeah, I I didn't know they had gunslingers in D and D. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, there's uh, Matt Mercer made one for Path for Five E, but that's just not a Mac. It's kind of official, but it's not. It's actually on D and D Beyond. But yeah, there's gunslingers. I don't know if I'd ever want to play one. It would break my immersion a bit. Maybe if I was a pirate. That's I want to play a gunslinger in the Skull and Shackles campaign. Camp. Okay. Um. How do I add the wild magic thing to my uh, character sheet? I uh, I tried dragging it over to the class and level, but it says origin. Where is that? I, yeah, I don't know if it was meant to be added. Oh, okay, never mind. It, it, the way it, was, it should have been okay. added. All right, I just thought that it was... I just thought it was supposed to be added because it popped up when I when I added the sorcerer. Yeah, well, it just means you pick that as your base class. Okay. And you know, if you go to um, abilities, you probably have a feature where it will say... Uh, Wild magic there, where you can click on the little right button there, and it'll tell you what wild magic is and all that. Stuff. And then you're gonna have to talk to Winter how you're gonna be rolling on that wild magic table. As everyone avoids you for about thirty feet. <laughs> and some of us will probably be ready to pick you up as you turn into a pot of plant for a day. Oh, absolutely. Besides, it sounds fun if you don't try go to try to harm your party. Like one of uh, Abby was saying when she was talking about it with her on the people in the Browns Wednesday game. Yes, they wanted... Uh, we had a bad experience with a wild mage once who was, you know, actively hoping to drop a fireball in the middle of the... <laughs> Well, if you're going to go for it, go all out. I mean, Sorcerer sound like a really interesting class. That's why I want to try one. Uh, it's hard getting used to you not being a tank. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a tank in this game. That might be... Uh... Interesting. Tank or cleric or cleric tank. <laughs> yeah, no heels, no tank. We're an interesting party. Well, my uh, if I take divine divine soul, that'll give me healing magic, right? Uh, yeah, and sorcerers would get healing magic. Okay, so I can be healer. Your character sheet. If you wanted to divine soul now, your character sheet might be a little messed up if you try to. Sorry, what? Say it again. You dragged and dropped a sorcerer over, and then you picked a wild magic. Right. I deleted the wild magic. First wild magic sorcerer in a five or uh, in Curse of Strahd. So looking forward to that. Yeah, you might want to go to the sorcerer class then and drag over the open up the class sheet and drag over to one where all the information on the blind soul if you're going to be doing that. So. Okay, I thought uh, I thought that I did. Why did you redrag over, over sorcerer? 
Oh, okay. Uh, all right, hold on, I'm gonna do that. Well, it's just so you have the information on hand, so you don't have to keep opening up the player handbook. Right. Okay. So I'll delete sorcerer. Well, oh, you don't have to delete, don't sorcerer. Have to delete sorcerer. Oh, okay. I thought that was what you just said. No, no. If you go to the, um, I can't remember where it's under. It's under Xanathar. It's under Xanathar. Okay. Yeah, if you go to Xanathar at the very bottom of the page. You go to the sorcerer. Well, if you, do you still got a PC crate on? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Okay, if you if you go to the very bottom, of the you pick the class, open up class, and pick on the sorcerer that says Xanathar's guide site because you have like a little. Yeah, I got Xanathar's guide open and I got sorcerer. Okay, if you go to the okay, very bottom of the page, you'll see the mind soul. Okay, I see. And just go to your ability yeah, page. Your ability. Click on the blue box right beside Divine Soul and just drag it across and drop it into the features area on your page. And that will just give you a quick reference if you need to figure out what Divine Souls gets and all that. I really like the 5e rule set. Yeah, so if you ever need to look up any information on that for the Divine Soul, we just you just need to click on the Divine Soul thing in your features, and it'll give a list of every spell that you'll get at certain levels, and you can just click on each one, and it'll tell you what level you get it at, and what levels things will unlock. Yeah, it'll just make life simpler for you to look up information. Yeah, because the subclass features you get aren't automatically added when you level up, so it's the stuff you need to track to make sure you get it. I'm going to have to figure out how to get rid of these silver bars, too. I don't think those will be too hard to get rid of, since they can't really be identified. You know, we, or we could like, you know, change the shape of them so that they can't be identified. Well, if they're trade bars, chances are they are stamped with some house. So, so we, you know, smash them or melt them or something like that, and then there's no way to identify. Well, yeah, we'll have to take time to sure study. I have a hard time getting rid of them. Ooh, 14 hit points. I hope they hear a toad shows up next week. Yeah, what a name. <laughs> what was his class again? Oh, he's a ranger, what? Uh, yes, he is. Drinking spec. Halfling ranger. Should be fun. And to be more specific, uh, he's a city urban ranger. Good pick. I don't think we got any humans in this party, do we? Yeah. We're going to get oppressed. <laughs> We're going to get oppressed? Yep. And then cast one spell and didn't even hit. <laughs> That's about typical for you, though. I know. That's what I think is funny. Like, even with Pathfinder, I get like a 
after all my minuses and all taken off from my ranger, I get like a plus 21 half the time while the buffs I get from other people and I still miss them already. <laughs> I'm just happy I lived on Saturday and my wolf pet didn't die. Uh, and one lucky roll all night and that's when he rolled the stabilizer. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how a 10 stabilized them. Yeah. I'm not too sure how that works, now, because I, I normally, when I get knocked down with one of my characters in private, the well, only time I got really knocked down to zero is I die. Again, I seem to take a lot of crits. to an annihilation of my state. I don't think my bear bearing is going to make it to the end, but I think it's still going to be Oh, are you all doing tomb? Yeah. Playing a halfling barbarian. Man, that is such a great adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see how it go. Can't figure out what subclass I'm going to and from a DM's perspective, it, you know, try to keep combats fair and not kill you, but Tomb, hey, you know, anything goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all surrounded on, it's all pretty much based around death, so I mean. The halfling who was raised by barbarian tribes in Icewind Dale. After his found on the side of the road, after the family was wiped out by orcs. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I'd do different running tomb again, I would start him at fifth level. Just nah, avoid all the, all the random encounters. <laughs> I tend to make random encounters a little less random. I, I mean, like, they'll, if they fight something that's a higher level, I'll probably reduce the hit points or something to, you know, it's a wounded. I've, I, I, I did consider that. I generally find, though, that I generally have to beef up encounters instead of, you know, make them easier. Yeah, I agree with that. That's the one thing I heard about 5e there. The combat rating isn't as balanced as they are. It's not so much that the combat rating isn't balanced. It's fine. It's that Tomb and Curse of Strahd are both so open that um, it's meaningless. You know, you can wander in at third level and get into a ninth level encounter in theory. Because there's nothing... Yeah, there. it's not... Uh, because Tomb and Strahd in particular are sandbox adventures basically. You can go anywhere, do anything. There's no real rails to sort of make sure that you get to the right place at the right time. Oh, that's cool. It is. It just means that players have to understand that occasionally, you know, if you don't want to die, you may have to ritual. Oh, yeah. Or burn down a building. A little harder to burn down an entire jungle. And the buildings here are mostly made of stone. It's true. Yeah, uh, let me know if you need some uh, jungle maps. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you have any, that's cool. I, I went out and got um, whatever, Meander's map pack. He had a dire jungle or something like that. Uh, so I added some of those because I figure, you know, that's probably going to be good for random encounters. Oh, uh, I found I didn't have enough different jungle maps. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. Uh, random encounters. I don't want to have to roll on that ever. Three times a day. <laughs> no, no, that's honestly what's called. 
Cool. Yeah, I remember uh, Pat and Pat and Kingmaker. We roll. Sometimes we roll some horrible rolls, man. <laughs> and I'm sure you fudge some of them so we don't get too powerful creatures. <laughs> Generally, I fudge them so that you fought the because you guys are at the leading edge. So yeah, I mean. When you fought the, the ancient dragon or whatever, the old dragon, it was because I picked it, not because you... Otherwise, you're fighting, you know, fifth-level encounters at level 10. It's pointless. Sure. Especially... Well, and we're not doing XP, so it's all level-based. Um, when they reach... We're doing the milestone method. But it's... Yeah, I mean, especially in Kingmaker where, you know, you're usually only having a single encounter a day, so you can, you know, blow all your ability. You need something at a higher CR level than... Yeah. When we were going through that swamp, we rolled up counters every time. Yeah, you did have really bad luck in there. It's okay, it's a swamp, it's supposed to be horrible to go through. One of my uh, favorite random encounters in Tomb was goblins, of all things. And the party had camped for the night, and I had two goblins running through the camp like they were panicked. You know, <laughs> just screaming, just running as quick as they can, something's chasing them, and... I brought out a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to get very creative with those encounters and then some of the big ones that I wanted to that I was looking forward to run were uneventful. That's well, always <laughs> unfortunate. Yeah. I would say we had some fun fights when we did out of the dark. A lot of beholders. Yep. And we even had a T-Rex in that one. Someone turned into it in our, in our party. That's, That's where, I discovered, where I discovered monks were fun. I got two... two or three players with a dinosaur and half a dozen NPCs with T-Rexes. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading what that strategy of polymorphing someone into a T-Rex looks interesting. I think we did it on a narrow bridge. Yep. Yeah, that's where I think I ran up uh, Bailey's back and started punching the guy as she was biting. I don't know, but once you get that vertical thing where you can run up walls, vertical walls, run across waters amongst... Get, you can get creative. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't actually kill myself a few times and did some really weird things. Oh, I hate the monks. Mohaha. Especially when you take mobile and you're moving by the time your level's like 65. Oh my god, yeah, I'm gonna run up, I'm gonna do my flurry of blows half a dozen times and then I'm going to run away and I'm still far enough that the monster can't reach me. <laughs> <laughs> and the one time I was able to reach him it was with a group of the four armed gorillas. <laughs> Actually, stunning strike is pretty cool when you get it to land. I think, uh, what was it? I got turned into a hamster or a gerbil once or something like that because I got possessed by a green gem and I started to run. <laughs> Let's face it, if they didn't do that, I would have been like the road runner and I probably would have been gone. <laughs> uh, I had two of the typical barbarians. You know, why use a door? There's a wall. I have an adamantine hammer. Let's just go through it. <laughs> and after 
four separate adventures of that. He finally come across, uh, oh, I forget what the creature was, but I cast a Bellful Polymorph on him. <laughs> at, at the time, it didn't sink in Bellful Polymorph is permanent. <laughs> You're now a little white r lab rat. <laughs> thing is, one of the episodes of Critical Role I was watching, they were flying across an airship, they turned a wavering into a bunny in midair. They were over an ocean. And then they were over an ocean and they were like 10,000 feet up and they turned it into a bunny and just all of a sudden. Oh, that would be funny. Actually, I think we did that something like that in Out of the Dark where we turned one Ormod giant or something into a, or a, a squirrel and I threw it down a chat. And we had a lot of fun during that thing. And I kind of overacted on one instance where a night, a Dark Elf stole something from me, just like a little item, and I punched him, knocked him out, and dragged him to the other <laughs> to female ones. I think I might have almost got a party. Uh, speaking of Critical Role, have you seen any of the Mythica movies? Uh, no, I no, I haven't. What are you planning to watch those? Are they good? Uh, you know, I was... The, the bad guy had, in the very first one and a half movies, I, I mean, he was a bit parked. So I didn't pay much attention to him. And then the third movie, The Necromancer... I'm like, God, that looks an awful lot like Matt Mercer. <laughs> yeah. And he played <laughs> an awesome bad guy. And A, the movies are a hell of a lot better than the Dungeons and Dragons movie that come out all those years ago. Oh, yeah, awesome. uh, Jeremy uh, Irons. <laughs> yeah, that one yeah. was terrible. Oh, they made a second one and went direct to DVD. Uh, it's one, it's of, one the of the very few, very few that the spellcasters, you know, you actually see them reaching into their component pouches. <laughs> cool. But uh, overall, I watched all five of them in two days, and uh, they are decent. Yeah. Now... At times, you can think that the script was probably written off of someone's game notes. <laughs> yeah, probably. But, yeah, that definitely worth watching. Well, that's how uh, Dragonlance was written. Dragonlance was... Yeah. Great. Was, okay. Great set of books. Yeah. And uh, speaking of Dragonlance, uh, did you see the animated movie that they came out they with? Came out with I did. Oh. I, I watched that. I, I don't remember everything that happened, but it's been pretty, cool. pretty disappointing I, for me too. I'd rather watch The Hobbit from Rankin Bass. Yeah. Uh, it, it was Hobbit disappointing for everyone, everyone, including yeah. you know the writers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was definitely not as good as it could have been, but, you know, I, I like any kind of, you know, I mean, as long as it's not just crap completely horrible, it's better than, you know, reality TV or, like, <laughs> you know, doctor shows and cop shows and every other TV show that's, you know, if, you can, if it's something that you can do in real life, why would you want to watch TV about it? Exactly. Then I tried it was a couple of years back when they brought out the Shinara Chronicles show. Oh my god, that show was horrible. And you know, I liked the first season. And then it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, for me, I think it's because it went 220 and then they started with book two, not book one. Mm -hmm. 